that's knife collector here. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Henk. Uh, it's been a long time since I uploaded a video to my channel. Uh, I've been very busy the past three years. First combining uh, a regular job and a job in the knife industry. Uh, mainly do marketing, later on full-time working in the knife industry for manufacturer. A lot of marketing, um, doing campaigns and stuff. A uh, lot of traveling, uh, doing a lot of shows in Europe and the United States. Uh, meeting a lot of awesome people in the knife industry. Uh, from, from icons in the industry till starting uh, young develop, uh, designers, uh, business people and so on. It seemed a good idea to do a couple of retrospective uh, videos. So back in the days I did a lot of reviews, testings, uh, first impression videos and, and that stuff, that kind of stuff. Back in the days I had a certain opinion about a particular knife or brand. What is my current opinion about that particular knife or brand? And for my comeback I want to do a couple of videos with this team. So probably three or four videos on that uh, with that team. And I want to start off with, uh, with real steel. Back in the days I had a lot of real steel knives. I was very enthusiastic about the brand. And I was still enthusiastic about that brand. Real steel, a Chinese company uh, doing his own designs, working with uh, other designers outside the company. Uh, offering, they, they offered a wide variety of designs, uh, fixed blades, uh, folding knives, uh, for example Kuridashi style knives, uh, tools uh, from very affordable and budget friendly till premium high end they really offer a wide variety uh, for example the uh, E70 series back in the days were very affordable budget friendly knives with offering HCR 13 V steel, offering uh, thumb stud opening, offering flipper flippers, um, but also Carson lab designs like the Megalodon, the, the, the Exorcist, uh, being premium high-end knives with premium steels, uh, titanium and so on, uh, carbon fiber but still below or around the $200 uh, price tag and everything in between. They offered the opportunity to young designers, for example uh, Ossip Hell I think has a lot to thank uh, to Real Steel. It was his breakthrough I think. A big shout out to Dirk Warmer from the German dealer Messer & Co. He was the first uh, with real steel in Europe and his efforts uh, even affected uh, the sales in, in the United States because real steel was pretty unknown when he started. A big shout out to Stefan123321, a YouTuber, a German YouTuber who acted like an ambassador for real steel without real steel knowing he did this. He did a lot of reviews and testing uh, on uh, real steel designs. And back in the days, I think seven, seven, six or seven years ago, for example, I bought for my children real steel knives. Uh, this is the E79 from my youngest daughter. It has seen a lot of usage, uh, but still in great shape, still as smooth and rock solid as back in the days. Uh, you probably probably can see the markings on the blade. Uh, uh, my other children have the E77, so the flipper variety. But it's, it's a very smooth knife, running on washers, 
offering HCR 13 MOV steel with G10 scales on a steel frame. For myself, I, I bought the E963, for example. Uh, really a an affordable working knife, same as with the E79, HCR 13 MOV steel, G10 scales. Uh, it, this one has seen a lot of use. It is still as smooth as then, it's still rock solid, no blade play. You probably can see the markings, though I do maintain, uh, maintain my knives. So the HCR 13 MOV steel, it's a budget steel, so not as good as premium steels. It will not keep, uh, keep its edge as long as premium steels, but when you strop it on a regular base, just a leather strop with compound, and you do this frequently, it keeps its edge for a very, very long time. Then the HCR steel isn't that bad. Actually, it's pretty good for the price. Mm -hmm. So, HCR steel, when you strop it regular frequently, it keeps its edge for a long time. So, um, this one, for example, uh, they had a price tag around 30 or 35 dollar. I managed to buy a couple without the laser engraving markings. Uh, uh, so without laser, uh, laser engraving, marking it as a real steel knife or as a E963. And I think those were half the price of the regular E963, still offering the same package with the HCR steel, the G10 scales. And this one has been in rotation, in my EDC rotation since I bought it. Still in my EDC rotation. Back in the days I was very enthusiastic about this, this design. And I'm still enthusiastic about this design. So, can I still recommend the E963 or other real steel knives? Yes, I can. Real steel offers a great uh, value for the buck. Uh, so, I'm still as enthusiastic about real steel knives as back then. So, this was my first retrospective video uh, celebrating my comeback to YouTube. Stay tuned. I try to upload a, a new video on a weekly basis, but within five or six weeks I have a big announcement because I'm working on a project with a couple of friends. We established our own company, not knife sales related or not a new brand or whatever, but it is a huge project and very fun and very interesting for the knife community. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. That's it for now. Bye-bye.